Welcome back. We'll have more of the Aerials competition for you coming up. But first, it's our privilege to welcome back an old friend, Tom Brokaw. I understand you had a chance to spend some time with the United States Aerials team recently. What's up? Well, Jim, as you know, Aerials may be the most perilous sport at these games. And when injuries occur, they tend to be calamitous. That was the case for American Emily Cook, who just before going to the 2002 Olympics, under-rotated a jump. She plunged to the snow and shattered both feet. After calamity, however, Cook has come all the way back. And what makes this story better is how this rather remarkable return has become now a team affair. I think I figured out why all of you get along so well, because you must have met at a very formative age <laughs> in a school for dysfunctional children. I mean, that's the only thing I can think. But what is it about this sport that binds you as friends as well? You know, when we started, we were young and dumb, and the only difference is now we're old and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> They're neighbors in Park City, Utah. Jarrett Speedy Peterson lives down the block. Ryan St. Ange is the tenant of landlady Emily Cook. Four years ago, do you think you'd be standing here? Uh, every once in a while, I wasn't so sure, but uh, I definitely have these two guys to thank for helping me get here for sure. Peterson was a late addition to the 2002 U.S. Olympic team, replacing Cook, who only weeks before the games crash landed into a three year rehabilitation. Both feet, bones, and ligaments exploding. Even walking again was in question. To give people an idea of what Emily did, she made her, her foot go from a size six to a size two inside a ski boot. And I can't believe that she's even standing because the doctors told her she wasn't going to be. Uh, regardless of how bad her day was, how much her feet hurt, every single day from the very start was ready to go again. Do you uh, still flash on that accident when you're skiing now? Uh, not when I'm training, no. I mean, occasionally I do think about it, but it's honestly not something I would ever take back. It was an experience that was a really big part of me. Emily Cook watched the 2002 Olympic opening ceremony in a wheelchair saw Peterson send her encouragement on national television. Cook couldn't know of the many setbacks to come, but she always held tight to what seemed at times a ridiculous notion, the dream of marching with the U.S. team at the 2006 Torino opening ceremony. I didn't have Emily in my mind. I had her right next to me in my arms. It was, it was so wonderful to have her there. Gonna make me cry. <laughs> that's all right. It was wonderful. It was so wonderful. Our whole team walked in together, and that's how I wanted to kick it off. We have a lot of fun in our house, for sure. Well, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> this threesome so displays their camaraderie under any and all conditions, whether it be the glare of television lights or two hellish weeks of conditioning with one of the military's most notoriously demanding units, the Navy SEALs. They taught us about everything, you know, how to be mentally strong, how to be physically strong, how to work as a team. Um, there was literally a moment when I had fallen down in the sand and couldn't move any farther, and Speedy picked me up and carried me to the finish line. And, you know, that was something that they stressed to us the entire time, is working together and pushing past where, where you think you can go. Cook was playing cheerleader at the qualifying round of men's aerials on Monday. Jarrett Speedy Peterson did make it through to Thursday night's final, but Ryan St. Ange very graciously was standing with us only moments after failing to qualify. His Olympics now over, but that's also an indication of his regard for Emily and Jim. The bonds between all of them, they're all adrenaline junkies. Well, and that's totally visible within the piece. Tom, there's something of a media debate about the inclusion into the Winter Games calendar of sports like freestyle and snowboarding. As a winter sports aficionado, what do you think? I think it's this generation's definition of athleticism on the mountain, and we ought to go with what they have to say about it. It's thrilling to watch for a spectator, and it's the most demanding thing I've ever seen on the mountain. What they do is 70 feet in the air. It's acrobatic, it's skiing, and it's sheer adrenaline junkies for all of them. Yeah, for my part, I couldn't agree more.